Great to have you still with us here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation this morning is going to be on the infrastructure deficit in Nigeria. People and, of course, analysts have estimated that Nigeria needs billions and billions of dollars in investment to meet up you know, with the infrastructure deficit uh, that we're currently dealing with. The Nigerian government currently has, of course, taken steps towards um, investing and starting up a one trillion naira company uh, called Infraco. And it's, of course, uh, with uh, an initial seed capital of one trillion naira. We've invited this morning Ajuri Ngalale, as I say, to the president on public affairs to join us and share his thoughts on us um, on this uh, particular issue. Good morning, um, Ajuri. Good morning. Uh, good morning to both of you and good morning to our viewers. Thanks for joining us. All right, I'm going to start with um, asking your thoughts on, you know, where we currently are with regards to infrastructure deficit as it has been described by analysts. Uh, people say that we need as much as, uh, I think it was the vice president who even mentioned, we need as much as $3 trillion uh, to meet up and, of course, uh, to invest in Nigeria's infrastructure if we're going to be able to see Nigeria move away from, you know, where it is currently. So let's get your thoughts, first of all, on where we currently are and what is desperately and urgently needed. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, there's really no doubt about the fact uh, that uh, we, we're facing a 50 years uh, worth of infrastructural decay uh, deficit that we have to bridge. And we also recognize uh, that this cannot be done uh, simply from the public purse. Uh, if you put about 10 federal budgets uh, together, back to back to back, uh, you're still going to have massive shortfalls uh, in infrastructural development. So we recognize that there's need uh, for us, even in view of President Mohamedou Buhari's unprecedented uh, interventions in terms of infrastructural development from roads and bridges to rail lines to airports and seaports and power plants and dams and all of these things. Uh, because the deficit is so huge, it's critical that we mobilize private capital to develop Nigeria's uh, public infrastructure stock. Uh, and, and really, we've been able to do this through a series of measures, even before we get into InfraCorp, which is the Infra Infrastructure Corporation of Nigeria, which is what you referenced with the one trillion naira uh, seed capital. Uh, His Excellency President Mohamedou Buhari uh, put in place a steering committee chaired by His Excellency Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo tasked with, uh, you know, establishing this company uh, in close collaboration uh, between the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Africa Finance Corporation and the Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority. Uh, and it's important to note that this one trillion naira is the seed capital. That is the, the money that we have right now in hand to start. Uh, we are looking to mobilize uh, up, uh, uh, up to upwards of uh, 15 trillion naira over the next few years uh, in conjunction with uh, our multilateral partners. And if you look at uh, partners like the uh, Africa Finance Corporation, you would know that we'll be able to mobilize quite a lot of money uh, in fairly short order. All right, Ajiri, I think this is a great one. You know, the federal government has invested one trillion naira to make sure that infrastructural deficits are addressed in Nigeria. But let's talk about the first projects that InfraCore would be investing in. Tell us about that, please. Well, they are really, uh, you know, it's kind of targeted at uh, several infrastructure projects. You know, I, I think it's important that, uh, first of all, once we get, uh, we're going to do it, we're going to have the takeoff in this, uh, I believe it's in uh, July or so, if I'm not mistaken, early third quarter or late second quarter. Uh, I think it will be at that point that you will see a rollout of the, of the, of the projects being targeted. But what I can tell you for now, because I don't want to preempt uh, those uh, events, uh, is that uh, it's not just going to be targeting uh, roads and bridges. Uh, we're talking about all sorts of integrated infrastructure in terms of our, our national development. You're looking at massive broadband cabling of the nation to ensure that we have 4G and 5G internet speeds all the way across the country rather than just the urban centers uh, and some state capitals. Uh, you're going to see uh, uh, extensions of oil and gas pipeline networks. You're going to be seeing 
uh, you know, uh, airports, uh, power plants, uh, dams, etc. You're going to be seeing a lot of quality infrastructure really that cuts across uh, multiple sectors. And I think what's also very critical is, you know, it, it, this while this is kind of a novel concept in the Nigerian context, uh, the InfraCorp, I think it's important to note that uh, this administration has already shown uh, its capacity to mobilize private finance uh, for public infrastructure development. I'll give you a few key examples. Uh, when we floated the Sukuk bonds uh, last year, that was even the second round, uh, we found that there was a massive oversubscription of those bonds by private investors because there's a huge appetite on the part of private investors to invest in Nigeria's public infrastructure, particularly around roads and bridges, because you're dealing with a market of 200 million Nigerians who use the roads. Uh, and so uh, you're going to have opportunities if you're constructing these roads uh, to have a kind of fair uh, e-tolling across those roads to ensure that you're able to recoup your investment in the construction uh, of those roads. And that's just one uh, example. If you look at the PIDF, which is responsible for the construction of the Lagos Shagamu Ibadan Expressway, which is going to be completed next year, and the Second Niger Bridge uh, in the southeast that's going to be completed next year, and the Abuja Kaduna Zaria Kano Expressway that's going to be completed in the first quarter of 2023. Uh, these are all, uh, from, you know, sourced from or resourced by innovative financing mechanisms. Uh, you know, similar to uh, the InfraCorp. So we we've already proven that we can mobilize private finance towards public infrastructure, but we're just scaling that up uh, massively when you talk about uh, ranging from 1 trillion to 15 trillion naira. All right. Uh, th there's also, you know, uh, the aspect where citizens might be concerned about if they will have to bear the brunt of this PPP arrangement um, over time. Um, and so how is that being worked out? And, you know, does the government have a plan to ensure that Nigerians do not you know, have to, of course, um, pay out of their, you know, pay, you know, beyond what they can handle in order to, you know, make back these funds that are being invested? Yeah, it's a very legitimate question uh, and a legitimate concern, at least, you know, starting out because, you know, there's a lot of unknown because this is not really something that has been done in this country before. Uh, so let me assuage that this morning. Uh, by just raising a very practical example that I think everybody can appreciate. If you ask 100% uh, of Nigerians, would you rather have one or two of these scenarios? On the one scenario, you have a, a six or eight lane expressway uh, cutting across the width of your entire state. And all you have to do is pay a 100 Naira toll to, uh, to use that particular route. And it's gonna get you to your destination uh, in the in the expected one hour instead of five hours, uh, or would you rather have a situation where you pay no toll whatsoever and you have your current road with all of the potholes and all of the things that we've come to see on our roads uh, around the country, uh, and you're being delayed? Uh, the one hour journey is now four hours. Uh, by the time you get to your destination, you're paying thousands of naira to fix your car because of the spoiled road. Uh, I think if you uh, if you put those two options before Nigerians, they would definitely choose option one, uh, which is to pay the 100 naira toll on a perfect road. Uh, so, so for us, that's really what this is about. It's about efficiency. It's about making sure uh, that we provide a cost savings for our people. I think if you ask Nigerians, Nigerians are not looking for a roof. They're not looking for free things. What they want is quality service. If you give Nigerians quality service, they're willing to pay for it. What they don't want is for you to be charging them for what you are not giving them. If you're not giving them the service, they don't want to pay for it, very naturally. So, so that's really the position. And I think uh, aside from Sukuk and the PIDF, which I've mentioned, you also have the Executive Order 007, which is uh, President Mohamedou Buhari's uh, innovation, which was the, uh, the, the Executive Order on the Road Refurbishment Tax Credit Scheme, where in effect, there in the Lagos Axis, for example, you would see the massive work going on on the uh, Apapa Oronshoki uh, Expressway, uh, where uh, Dangote Construction has paid about 73 billion naira to reconstruct that very critical uh, strategic uh, road uh, on behalf of the federal government in exchange for or in exchange for calibrated tax relief. So they pay the 73 billion upfront to construct the road, and then over the course of say 10 years. 
we calibrate uh, their tax relief over 10 years to the tune of the same 73 billion. So for example, we could pay them 7.3 billion over the next 10 years uh, in, in reduction from their tax bill, uh, for example. So th these are kinds, of, these are some of the novel in innovations we've also used to mo mobilize private finance uh, toward the development of public infrastructure. And even in the South South, we're doing the same with NLNG. Uh, they're putting up about 120 billion to facilitate the construction with Julius Berger of the uh, Boni Bodo Road, which is very strategic because it links our NLNG headquarters on Boni Island to the mainland of this nation to facilitate the road transportation of gas uh, products for the first time in our history. Uh, and that's uh, something that they're doing with 120 billion. We can pay them now back over a long period of time uh, in calibrated tax relief. So it just goes to show you whether it's PIDF, whether it's Sukuk, or whether it's uh, the Executive Order 007, or now InfraCorp. Uh, we've shown that we can put together very innovative financing mechanisms like um, to get these projects Ad on Adjuri. the ground, to get the infrastructure on the ground, because we uh, recognize um, Adjuri, those investors are coming we in. Will, you know, kind of hold on. We, I, I would acknowledge you know, some of these things that you've mentioned. Um, but, you know, I, I, I want us to also talk about, um, from you, because I, I've spoken with you, uh, to, with you in the past on infrastructure, um, and you made promises. You said, of course, that in 2020, that I should ask you, remind you of certain things that I wouldn't mention now. But I want to ask about timing. So do we have a time frame? Because you, you just mentioned July now, um, that, uh, by your estimation. Um, do we have a time frame for when these things would get into work and when, you know, we may be able to see some of these things actually uh, materialize? Um, is it also a concern or should it also be a concern to Nigerians that in 2023, when this government is leaving, these projects don't stop? They will continue. The investments will continue. Um, the PPP arrangements will continue. There is not going to be a change in any of this. So can you give any assurance um, with regards to that? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, any timeline I have ever given from the time I assumed office in 2019 till now, I, I can stand on. Uh, if you look at uh, what we said with the Sako Niger Bridge, we were consistent from the beginning that it would be completed uh, in 2022. Same thing with Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Uh, if you look at the airports that, uh, that were, were going to be done, uh, you're looking at the same timelines that are going to be uh, maintained. Pony Pono Road, same thing in terms of uh, 2022. Uh, so, so we're standing on those. Nothing has changed at all. Uh, I think that the, the major element is when you look at uh, the question of continuity. There's no doubt that this is that this is uh, you know something that Nigerians are thinking about. Uh, that is why President Mohamed Buhari was very intentional about bringing the private sector into the into the uh, not just into the projects, uh, but actually into the governing structure of of of, of the infra corp infrastructure corporation of Nigeria. Uh, because when you have uh, uh, extra, if you want to call it extra, uh, extra government, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, institutions who are involved in the management of the fund with asset managers from the private sector, etc. It's not going to be about whether or not uh, a, 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 which Nigerian politician is the president of Nigeria at any given time, because the structures have been built uh, to run autonomously. Uh, so that should not be uh, much of a concern. And I think if you look at uh, the, you know, the other measures that I've mentioned in terms of the mobilization of private capital to public infrastructure, uh, it, it actually allows us in, in a more uh, concise fashion uh, to be able to finish projects on time. Why? Uh, because you're bypassing all sorts of bureaucratic and political, uh, uh, you know, encumbrances that we know uh, have formed a, a major uh, kind of uh, bulwark against getting things done on time in terms of infrastructural development in this country. I think the last point I want to make very quickly is if you look at the big picture of where we are now in the, in the larger trajectory of history, we are now at the point of implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Uh, the reason why that's important is because you have well over $1 trillion coming into this continent, hundreds of millions of jobs, uh, so many different industries and factories looking to set up across the continent. And what they are looking at is who is that, which country is that, that gives us the big market, that gives us the infrastructure to make, uh, you know, the, the business process, the ease of doing business uh, a reality, uh, that makes uh, the facilitation of import and export flows, uh, you know, very easily manageable. Uh, and it's infrastructure they need. And so that is why you're seeing Mr. President come up with all of these innovative measures 
both from the public and private sector, uh, to ensure that we get this infrastructure on ground and we get it on ground in a hurry. I think just uh, two days ago, uh, the TCN reported the highest wheeling capacity uh, in the history of the country at 5,800 megawatts. So we are on course, we are moving forward, uh, and we are asking Nigerians to please be patient with us. Okay, uh, Mr. Because Angelale. all that we have been investing in over the last five or six years are now taking uh, full shape. And Nigerians should expect a series of major commissionings next year, all in right. addition to those this year, like the Lagos Ibadan Rail Line and many others. Hmm. Mr. Angelale, really, you've mentioned some points that Nigerians would, you know, nod and say, this sounds good on paper. But as of 2020, the infrastructure deficit in Nigeria is split at $100 billion annually. And we know that even even though private-public partnerships are fantastic, there are lots of challenges with them. There's a lack of regulatory framework. There's the issue of, you know, government monitoring of these contracts, and even sometimes government not keeping to the end of the bargain. So with InfraCro, what really would be different? How is the government revamping PPE to make sure that this actually delivers on its promise? Well, thank you very much. I think the, the best way to win the confidence of Nigerians who rightly feel skeptical about what government says uh, is to show them what we've done, not to talk, uh, not to speak more grammar. It's not more grammar they want. I mean, so for example, what do I mean? Uh, right now, uh, two of you are in the, uh, in, in, in the Southwest, in the, in the Lagos axis. Now, I don't have to do uh, speak a whole bunch of propaganda and grammar to uh, inform you about the Lagos Ibadan rail line because you're there. Uh, you saw the construction as it was going on as you were going through traffic. Uh, you see the construction on Lagos Shagamu Ibadan Expressway, the, the expansions, the new flyovers. I mean, you're seeing all of that. So I don't have to tell you about that. Uh, now, a person in Abuja may not be familiar with what is on ground there in Lagos, but certainly you are. Uh, the person in Abuja will see the Abuja Kaduna uh, Zaria Kano Expressway under construction, uh, but you in Lagos will not be able to see that. So there is need for us to co communicate these things verbally, but the best way uh, to, 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 to win the confidence of people is to ensure that they, you refer to the things that are already on the ground. The Second Niger Bridge that's at 55%, when we say it will be completed next year, they can go and look at what is there now as, uh, as against what was there in 2015, which was 0%. Nothing had even started. So, so that is the reality of it. I think uh, in terms of that's for winning confidence. In terms of the regulatory frameworks, uh, it's also very important. We, we are not uh, uh, you know, negligent uh, of the fact that uh, you, you know, you do have a terrible history uh, of concession, uh, concessions in this country. Uh, we know that concessions were given uh, as a kind of a reward to political cronies under previous administration. And as a result, we saw how that encumbered development in places like the Matala Mohammed International Airport on the Lagos Shagamu Ibadan Expressway, which this government, ironically, had to work so hard to negotiate out of that terrible concession where concessions are given out to people that do not have the technical competence or the financial weight uh, to do what they say they're going to do. Uh, so what, that is why you're seeing this administration actively bringing in multilateral partners, uh, major lenders, people like the Africa Finance Corporation, organizations like that, and other major international financiers, in addition to our local financiers, to say, look, let us get this thing done and let us get this thing done uh, properly. Okay, this is Ajari, about who knows Ajari I'm sorry Muhammad I had to Buhari, button here. Uh, from secondary school. This is about who can Ajari, do the job. apologies I have to button here, but we're really running out of time, and, and there's a question I need to ask you. I pass by the Ikoi Federal Secretariat's everyday tour for work, and I see the rot happening there. It's about 15 stories. Uh, that was, you know, the beehive of activities before it was, you know, Nigeria's capital was moved to Abuja. So that Ikoi Federal Secretariat is has been abandoned. You only see, you know, uh, hoodlums. You see rodents and all of that. The, I pass there and I we basically seen this massive infrastructure just going to waste. So for Infraco and moving forward, you know, talking about infrastructure development in Nigeria, beyond just launching new projects, are there plans by the government to revamp and rehabilitate these projects that are, that are basically wasting away? Oh, absolutely. Thank you very much for this question. You, you know, we are very much in tune with the fact that you have a lot of infrastructure that we could really, really uh, not just rehabilitate, uh, but in many cases, totally reconstruct to suit uh, the modern realities uh, required of, uh, of smart cities, of, of, of economic hubs. Uh, a, a typical example of this, 
uh, is if you look at what we're doing uh, with uh, the, the National Theater in Lagos, uh, where you have a significant, uh, major, multi-billion naira investment uh, coming in from the Central Bank of Nigeria to, to turn the National Arts Theater, uh, for example, uh, into a, a kind of a culture complex, a national uh, arts and culture complex, where our young people uh, can showcase uh, their, 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 their fashion, uh, uh, you know, entrepreneurship, uh, their uh, fintech, uh, financial uh, technology, entrepreneurship around new innovations, developing new apps, etc. Uh, we are developing an, a state of the art, uh, you know, very modern uh, kind of arts and culture hub uh, and entrepreneurship hub uh, for our young people predominantly at the National Arts Theater. And that's just one example out of so many uh, where, where we're involving the private sector uh, to be able to invest in some of these, uh, you know, old landmarks to really bring them up to uh, modern international standard uh, and really to showcase the best of information and communication technology and actively integrate that into our infrastructure uh, moving forward in a way that you you may see in the West and the East, but you're not really seeing so much in Africa. We're, we're mobilizing the private uh, sector toward that. So yes, okay. we are aware of that and we're going to continue to push aggressively to ensure that old, uh, old infrastructure structure across the country, similar to the National Arts Theatre, uh, will be updated uh, in due course. But you have to find quality, competent investors who have the financial weight and the technical competence to deliver on what they say they're going to do, not people who are friends uh, of presidents and friends of ministers coming in uh, and messing the country up, uh, as we have had in the past. And that is the focus of President Mohamed Buhari moving forward. All right. Um, I, I want you to, you know, quickly also clarify once again on the tolling, um, because, you know, you used, um, you know, the roads and, you know, having to pay, you know, for uh, toll gates, you know, in, in order to have great roads across Nigeria. But, you know, just to also mention that the infrastructural deficit we're talking about, it's not just roads now. We're talking education, we're talking healthcare, um, security, energy. Um, we have refineries that need to be fixed. Um, you can, can you assure that we have the funding and the plans to delve into all of these sectors, um, including information technology, um, and not just roads. And of course, will Nigerians be able to afford Absolutely. this? Will Nigerians be able to afford, you know, tolling in every of these, you know, um, sectors? Absolutely. Th thank you very much. So, uh, you know, when I started, I was referring to this kind of the InfraCorp's focus on multiple sectors. We talked about broadband, cabling, power plants, dams, uh, some of these other things. Of course, when you get into uh, schools and hospitals, particularly at the primary uh, level, primary education, primary health, you're really dealing with, uh, you know, the responsibilities of state governments. So states obviously uh, also have to be very proactive about uh, what they are uh, ready to concession potentially or partner the private sector on. But what we can talk about are federal assets. So, of course, roads, bridges, airports, seaports, uh, power plants, etc. Uh, that's where we can come into it. Refineries, as you rightly mentioned, uh, which, again, a perfect example is what's going on at uh, Portakot Wari and Kaduna refineries owned by the NNPC, where we're uh, working with international financiers uh, to secure uh, very affordable capital uh, uh, with our private partners who are OEM partners. These are people who are going to be able to, uh, you know, uh, fully reconstruct those refineries according to original specifications. Uh, we are at a very advanced stage of financing uh, about $1 billion for the reconstruction of our refineries in collaboration with the private sector. Uh, so that's just to tell you uh, that, yes, it is for integrated infrastructure. And I want to quickly answer your question about the roads and tolling. You would recall that under the Obasanjo administration, we had a very inefficient uh, cash tolling regime where people would pay cash uh, and you would have so much corruption involved where, for example, they will say, OK, today on this road, the only 50 people pass through the road. Uh, oh, after about 2,000 people pass through the road. So they're only remitting a tiny uh, bit of change uh, as against the cash that they're actually collecting on the road. What we're doing this time around is there are two major elements. One, President Mohamedou Buhari has made very clear that we are only going to toll roads that we have completely reconstructed. So Lego Sagamu Ibadan, we will only toll it when it is completed. Second Niger Bridge, the same thing. So that's number one. Number two is it's going to be e-tolling, not cash tolling. Cash tolling will be banned. So it's going to be automated. Right. Now, what will uh, happen Nigeria. is if you do not have a bank account, a BBN, you would recharge a card with cash, and then you would put your card into the machine as you're going through the toll gate. Nigeria, um, apologies. And you go your way. 
um, we have to stop here. It, it, it all sounds really good. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, like you've said, you know, from July, we may start to see some of these things actually, um, you know, uh, being put in place. Um, we look forward to having another conversation because there's so much more that we, you know, need Nigerians to hear about and know about and how much more we can use, you know, from the 2021 budget as for almost a four trillion naira, you know, a capital expenditure. If we have Infraco running, it might, of course, free up some of that money, you know, to do other things for the country. So it's, there's a lot of, you know, these conversations that we need to have, but we will bring you in again. Thank you very much for joining us and um, looking forward to speaking with you again. Thank you. Thank you very much, both of you. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. All right. So um, the World Health Organization has launched the report on hearing and we'll be focusing on the World Hearing Day after the break.